No, I seriously think about this every single day, and I'm sorry if I sound stupid. If somebody has $500, and they've already paid taxes on it, and they give it to me, so now just because it goes from them to me, I also have to pay taxes on it, even though they, they just did. And then not only that, but anytime I spend one of those $500, I'm going to also pay another tax fee on whatever item I'm buying. And then whoever I bought the item from will have to pay taxes on the money they just earned from what I bought. So like if it, so every single dollar, like if a dollar is a hundred cents, Hold on. Just forget it. Hey, hey, everybody. It's Eddie from Tokyo. This is your cryptocurrency update from Japan. And I want to tell that gal, you don't sound stupid. It's overwhelming when you finally understand that every time money moves, it's taxed. Just think about how many times this $20 American bill has generated tax. And then pile on top of that, the cost of inflation. Oh gosh, this is why this next clip really spoke to me. If you're looking at your bank account, when I look at mine, I'm doing everything I can not to put my money in the bank, actually becoming less worth less due to inflation when I can be accessing these great DeFi, DeFi yields. So I think that it re represents a viable alternative to the centralized financial system both economically and as Sergey likes, our CEO likes to talk about, you know, people put their trust into code uh, over time more than institutions. This is what smart contracts are going to enable. Put your trust into code. Yes, that is what smart contracts are going to enable. There are several scenarios ahead of us. The Fed may begin to tighten and raise interest rates, or they might just continue to print more money, keeping this very fragile economy afloat. But this path is not sustainable. Please listen to Jerome Powell here, the chair of the Federal Reserve. Now, behind me is a, is a chart of our public debt going all the way back to, I think, 1990. You don't have to be Euclid to see that the direction is up. And it's been up under Republican administrations. And it's been up under Democratic administrations. It's been up under Democratic and Republican Senates and, house, and, and, and houses. It's up. So here's my question to you. At what point, how much is, is too much? At what point in your judgment are we going to hit the point where you have to say, no, that's it. We can't do anymore. It's hurting the world. It's hurting our country. So we, we don't know when that is. Um, and as the world's reserve currency, demand for our paper is is very strong. Uh, if, if you if you had shown that and then asked somebody 15 years ago to predict what interest rates would be, they wouldn't be predicting that the that the 10 year would be at 175. No. Right. So it, there does there been a lot of demand. But they would have predicted that the debt was going to go up. They would, they, would, they would have looked at that picture and said, well, you must be experiencing difficulty borrowing, but we're not at all. So now we're on an unsustainable path. Debt is not at an unsustainable level, but the path is unsustainable, meaning it's growing faster than the economy, meaning fully faster than the economy. We have to address that over time. We will address it over time. And the better way to do it is soon and to do it in good times. Start when the economy is strong and the taxes are rolling in. And that's, that's you know, I, since we don't do fiscal policy, but I will say, that the sustainability of the debt is, uh, is something we need to get back to and focus on again. Good luck, Mr. Chairman. Thanks, sir. I imagine you're familiar with Alex Mashinsky. He's on the right here, the founder and CEO of Celsius Network. He is really showing us how to turn the traditional finance on its head. I'm talking about the banks who manage money, the JP Morgans of this world, the ones that get the yield, the rewards in the income. And instead of paying their customers who bank with them, it goes to the shareholders and the executives in the form of dividends, stock buybacks, bonuses. This isn't how the world has to be. All of those standard banking activities 
the creating of markets, the lending, the borrowing, the market making, the arbitrage, this can be done in the space of crypto. We are able to take all that value and all the yield, all the rewards and share it with the community. He has 1.2 billion users, 30 billion in digital assets, and he's paid out 1 billion thus far. This is the way cryptocurrency can provide the financial freedom for everybody, a true level playing field. Take, for example, the traditional stock Tesla, when they can get 30% on that borrowing. But does the holder of those shares ever see that kind of yield? No, never. So I want to follow this same path and I want everyone to participate to bring that value that you deserve into your pocketbook. I hope you get a chance to watch this video where he spent the time with Ash Bennington on Real Vision Crypto. But now I want to play a clip for you where Alex also appeared on Kitco. They hosted him on December 22nd. And you're going to see the velocity of crypto assets and compared to the dollar is amazing. We see this big shift, this big move into DeFi and CeFi. The velocity of money is higher in crypto markets. Does that imply that people with cryptos are spending more cryptos? Uh, how do you, what do you mean by that? It, it, it's not that they're spending, it's the same dollar uh, rotates 20 times faster. The velocity of uh, stable coins is 22 and the velocity of the US dollar is 1.2. The rest of the US dollar used to be 2.6. These are all uh, uh, numbers that are available from FRED, from the go uh, government reporting agencies, FRED.gov, I think. Yes. And you can see it used to be 2.6, now it's 1.2. So the dollar lost over 50% of its velocity over the last two decades. At the same time, crypto assets have gone from zero to over 20x, meaning the, the dollar turns 20 times faster it creates good, right? So the same dollar is moving very slowly in traditional economy and very fast. It creates a lot of GDP very fast in crypto assets. That's why assets are moving or dollars are moving from traditional finance into DeFi and CeFi. The total locked value in DeFi today is 96 billion. Look at the four year chart to the right. It's a visual to see how it has grown, particularly since the middle of last year. Maker, Curve, Convex, Aave, Instadap, Compounds, Uniswap, Yearn, SushiSwap, Balancer. I mean, I can go on. And it is Ethereum, Ethereum, Ethereum. The top 100 is now over 95% on Ethereum. This is why these other different chains that are appearing are very, very exciting. Now, please have a listen to Chico Crypto. He's a fellow YouTuber who is, well, looking better. And I know everyone is sending him uh, their best. But what he says, I think, is starting to be realized, finally starting to be realized outside of the XRP community. No. And the SEC wants to have full control over DeFi. They want full control over the crypto markets. They don't have it with Bitcoin. Bitcoin's only one, you know, that's been classified fully as a commodity and it's just known that it is a commodity. Well, the SEC is saying I'm coming after everything else. So that worries me, and um, 2022 is going to be a big year for, you know, what happens with regulators. I'm kind of worried about the Ripple case. I almost have a feeling that it was kind of set up to be like this. It's not about Ripple and classifying Ripple as a security. It's actually going back and being able to get Ethereum and classify it as a security and take down what's happened. You know, DeFi has unshackled a lot of people and gave people financial freedom through, um, you know, some of these APYs and, um, the ability to stack money and you know leverage leverage their assets in ways that weren't possible in the traditional financial system unless you're buku rich well it's given people like me and you the opportunity to get those APYs that some of the richer people um, get out in this world
Let me give you another example of how DeFi is taking hold. Vitalik on Twitter asked the Ethereum community, if you wake up in 2035 and 80% of all transactions and savings in the world are in one currency, but not Ethereum, which would you prefer it to be? He gave Bitcoin, the US dollar, Solana, or ADA. And look at this, 600,000 plus votes. Wow, that is a sampling. ADA was chosen. And why do I think so? Well, most likely because the moment that many people have been waiting for is the coming this Thursday on January 20th, the launch of Sunday Swap. This is a fully functional beta decentralized exchange where you can delegate your ADA. You can do that if you put it on there prior to 2145 UTC, the deadline is January 25th, and then you can earn these Sunday rewards, the yield farming, 500,000 Sunday will be allocated for the first six months. ADA is up over 10% today. I think there's a lot of excitement. And attorney John Deaton made a note on Twitter that the Hinman speech is still up. It is on the SEC website. The day that the SEC removes it, he says, if they remove it, is the day we know for sure Ethereum folks might be next. Well, let me show you something that is really exciting. Binance today announced that it completed the wrapped XRP integration and they opened up for deposits. This allows XRP to be used on the Ethereum network. Yes, that is putting the XRP holders in that space of DeFi that is going to really be life changing. So the wrapped XRP further integration to leverage DeFi on the Ethereum platforms. I want everyone to be earning yield. It is the most powerful financial tool that we can use to stay ahead of tax and inflation and don't allow Gensler to take it away. Remember, he was appointed and we vote. Before I jump to the fluff, I have a little bit of community news. This is Eleanor Terrett. She's going to be on the channel with Chip and Jeff. Their channel is called On the Chain. And I think as a producer at Fox Business covering the SEC versus Ripple, she's going to be a very fun guest. Go, Ellie, go. And look who I have here. This is Kickboy Triple. I'm sure if you've been around a while, you'll recognize him. We used to have a lot of fun together on the zoo with uh, lots of guests. That was, I have really great memories. But let me show you what he's up to. He is starting a music industry melding with the metaverse. He's going to create this virtual reality platform called Meta Music World, and it'll make it easy for artists to market, promote, and showcase their music. I wish him all the success, and I can't wait to see it come to fruition. All right, we're jumping to the fluff. So on January 15th, we had the Tokyo Auto Salon show that is always something that everybody anticipates every year because some of the cars are just over the top. And I want to share with you some of those photographs from the show on uh, that was uh, over the weekend and also from the past. I think it might be the only show that you can go and see women who aren't half naked, but in kimono showing off the cars. Let me show you the one that is just unbelievable from 2017, this Mercedes. Look at the work that went into covering it from top to bottom in those crystals. Unbelievable. And then here we have in 2018, a Speed 8 Bentley. I'm sure it took the show. And uh, wow, check it out. Pure glitz. And if I bring you to, I think this was 2020, look at that beautiful copper color. Oh, it's just too, too beautiful. This is this year. Yeah, I picked a Lambo, not because this is crypto, but because I wanted to highlight the Anija uh, shop that does custom work here in Dachiku. Dachiku is um, mm, north east of where I am, and they have a shop there where they will take any project on, and the owner is as colorful as his cars. 
he is even seen around Tokyo in a pink Ferrari with cherry blossoms. <laughs> yeah. Well, do take care. And if you come to Tokyo, be sure to visit their shop. They have a showroom that is really fabulous. Sayonara for now. Bye-bye.